Hey, everybody. Um, it's okay. The front row won't bite you. So if anyone wants to be up here, which is we're worshiping, that'd be fantastic. Hallelujah. Are we on? Yeah. Whoa, we are on right there. Hey, welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is Christ Place Church, and we are actually uh, taking this time to uh, spend the next 30 minutes in worship and in prayer. And uh, we're going to actually be encouraging you, whether you are uh, watching this after the recording and you're doing it in the evening time or you're right now live with us, I want to encourage you to grab a piece of paper. You never know when, when the Holy Spirit might not just say something and you need to write it down or, or it could be that something's distracting you and you need to write it down so you can kind of focus on prayer. And as you heard us share multiple times this week, amen, prayer is better caught than taught. Uh, at the same time, there, there's teaching. We know that for a fact because when the disciples heard Jesus praying, they said, Lord, teach us how to pray. And, and he gave them a model of prayer. So what we're going to do this very first day of our 21 days, come on, are you guys alive here? You got to give me, okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah, there's some people here. Yeah, 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 Lance, maybe. Um, uh, we are going to break down the Lord's Prayer. And we're just going to walk through it. And we're going to pray it together. And here's what I've got. We've got actually a scripted prayer. I'm not necessarily someone who does a lot of scripted prayers uh, or, or actually prays scripted prayers. But I have found when it comes to corporate prayer, it's nice to have something uh, to, to kind of use as a guide and a direction. So we're just going to use the Lord's Prayer to help guide us. At times, we'll go off script. If you want to know how to follow us, you can actually go to uh, ChristPlace.Church forward slash pray. If you go there, you want to select on the model of prayer that says the Lord's Prayer. And then you'll see everything we're going to do. It's right there. Uh, if you're not sure you know how to navigate the website in that way, you can actually go to uh, Pastor Rick Lormer's Facebook page, and I've just cut and pasted everything we're going to be praying right on that page as well. You all ready for this? Okay. Amen. I'm going to have those who are in person to stand right now, and I'm going to lead us in a prayer, and then we're going to go right into worship, very acoustical worship. And what's going to be very important here is that you don't let the morning or the week or the weekend blues keep you from giving God everything you got. Something we say to our staff on a regular basis is, man, great is the Lord and great that he be praised. It doesn't say great is he to be praised when we feel great or when we are greatly emotional. No, it's that he deserves great praise because he is great. Amen? Amen? Lord God, we love you. We open up this, this day, these 21 days of prayer right now giving you praise and giving you honor. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Let's worship him. Hallelujah. speak to me now. You have all my attention. I will linger and listen. I can't miss a thing. Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new. So I surrender all I want is to live within your love, be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you deeper. Lord, I will open up again, throw my fears into the wind. I am desperate for a touch. Of heaven, whoa, 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 whoa. You're the fire in the morning, you're the cool in the evening, the breath in my soul. Oh, the life in my bones. There 
There is no hesitation in your love and affection. It's the sweetest of all. Oh, Lord, I know my heart wants more of you. My heart wants something new, so I surrender all. All I want is to live within your love, be undone by who you are. My desire is to know you deeper, and Lord, I will open up again, throw my fears into the wind, I am desperate for a touch of heaven, oh.
of me and more of you I just want to see
Thank you, God. We are available, Lord. Scripture tells us one day Jesus was praying in a certain place. And when he finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. And Jesus said, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but to deliver us from from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 through 13. What we're going to do right now is we're going to continue in this place of worship and prayer. And really, worship is a form of prayer. It's, it's prayer and song many times, declaring who he is and uh, us choosing to surrender, even as you heard in one of our worship songs. This first part, when Jesus says, pray, our Father in heaven, it's, it's the key to the relational side of what God wants in your walk with him. That our Father, that our King is first a Father. I love that. In Romans, we're told that you've not received a spirit that makes you fearful slaves. Instead, you received God's spirit when he adopted you as his own children. And now we call him Abba, Father. Abba, Father. I'm going to lead us in a corporate prayer. It's found on our website under the Lord's Prayer. But I'll stop at times and encourage you maybe to pray on your own. You're welcome to to move around, to be seated or to stand. Uh... But agree with me right now as I lead us in prayer. Father, I come to you in prayer today. We come to you in prayer today. Thankful that we are your children. I want you to personalize that. Lord, tell tell, tell me you're grateful that you're his child. You've adopted us. Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. But you have forgiven me and adopted me as your own. And I'm so grateful to call you my father. Come on, tell me in your own words. (laughs) Thank you for loving me. I love you, oh God. Lord God, we ask you to confront the lies that many believers have. And they don't really know what it means to embrace you as a father. And church, I'm going to ask you right now, if you're good with him as a father, and you, that's, a, that's, a, that's a really um, uh, attractive part of your relationship with him. It's been, it's been a stronghold for you. Uh, there are so many in the church, they have trouble seeing God as a father because maybe they didn't have a good earthly father. So here's what I'm going to have you do. I want everyone just to intercede for a second. Raise your hands. Father, we ask you to help all the believers, especially at Christ's place, that don't see you as a father, that you would remove the blinders. God, their past experiences that have scarred them from seeing you as a good father. We come against all the lies from hell in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we worship your name. You taught us to say, hallowed be your name. 
That God, you are righteous. God, you make us righteous. You're, you're the sanctifier. Lord, we thank you that, that you're, you're Jehovah Sidkenu. You're Jehovah Jireh. God, we thank you that, that you bring the banner of victory in our lives. Hallowed be your name. Thank you for being our provider and our protector, oh God. Mm. Proverbs 18.10, Lord, we pray this. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous man runs into it and is safe. God, may we as Christ followers in Christ's place run there first. May you be our strong tower. If you agree with that right now, just say, yes, Lord, be my strong tower. Be my strong tower. Teach me how to run to that strong tower. Hmm. God, I am in awe of you. Your name is just that, a strong tower, a place of protection and safety for me and for your people. For those right now that feel insecure, Lord, we, we ask that you embrace them, that you bring them in. That, God, that even ourselves, we could, we could model what that protection looks like, that safety you bring to us, to me. I praise you as my healer my shepherd, my banner of victory. You are my peace, my provider. Hallowed be your name, my righteousness, my sanctifier. Your name is great, oh God, and I worship you. I worship you. I want you right now just to take a second and call out his names. Worship him and put your hands together if you want to. Clap. Man, we're so grateful for who you are, God. Hallowed be your name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, Lord, we, we embrace your prayer, the Lord's prayer, as you teach us to pray your agenda first, your kingdom first, your kingdom come, your will be done. As a child of yours, we want to be part of this. God, we know you have a heart for the lost. Teach us that heart, God. Teach us how to pray for the lost. God, for the marginalized. God, for the division. It's in our country right now for the hatred that exists, that it seems to be drawn in partisanship, genders, races. God, we long for your, your will to be done, your kingdom to come. God, I, I recognize that there's no better plan on earth than your plan. Come on, right, church? Just, God, I embrace that. God, if you're praying with me, just say, Lord, I embrace that. I, and I pray, God, for your will to be done in my life. Now, here's what I want you to do. I want you to start listing some of the areas of your life. It can be personal. It can be your family. It could be your work. It could be your ministry. And I want you just to ask that God's will be done in them. Thank you, God. Lord, I pray your will be done in, God, my, my family at Windy and I, that we first serve you. Your will be done in our family. God, I pray your will be done in Josh and Kelsey's lives. God, your will be done in Ricky, Jacqueline's lives, and Lord Lance, and Hazel's life. Your will be done. That, God, they know your presence. That, oh, God, they would long for your will to be done. Your kingdom first. Mm -hmm. Lord, there are people today who, whose finances are distracting. And, Lord, we pray that your kingdom be done in their lives. That your will be done in their lives. Lord, there are brothers and sisters in Christ right now when things are out of control. They, they, don't, they, they feel like they can't do anything right now. Lord, we don't know specifically what's going on, but we know this. We want your will being done. God, this world is lost and needs you desperately. We pray that your people would recognize that, God, this was a moving factor. This, God, for you so loved the world you gave. We, we want to have that kind of, of, of brokenness for our world as well. We want to be driven in that way. We want, Lord God, that your will be done in us in that way. God, we pray. I pray for every person to know you. I pray that you bring an awakening, God, in our world and in our nation. And Lord, we take a second right now. We pray for your kingdom come, your will be done for leaders in our life. And here's where I want to encourage you. Pray for your parents. Pray for um, grandparents. Pray for local leaders. 
Pray for state leaders. Pray for government leaders. And let's pray God's will be done. Lift them up right now. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. I want you to hear yourself pray. This is not a time when you think it. So if you be home, hear yourself pray. If you're here in this room, hear yourself pray right now. Hallelujah. We pray for the leaders in our lives, Lord. We pray for the pastors in our lives. Lord, I lift up our campus pastors to you right now. I, I thank you for Clee and Shannon Mangrum. Oh, God, that your will be done in their marriage, in their family, Lord, in, in their campus. Oh, God, thank you for their leadership. Lord, I lift up Pastor Ryan and Robin Martinez, Connections Church. And God, that your will be done in their lives. You guide them and direct them in their marriage and their family, in their church, their campus, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Your will be done. Lord God, for Pastor Nathan, Sandy Kroll, God, as they lead West Point in this interim, we pray, God, you, you protect them, you guide them. God, your will be done in their lives. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. God, thank you for Pastor Lance and Keita Riley. Lord, we thank you for them as leaders in the old Cheney campus. We pray, God, that your will be done in their marriage and their family. Hallelujah. Lord, we lift up the different mayors of our communities. Here in Lincoln, Mayor Baird, and pray you draw her to yourself. And you guide her and give her wisdom. Lord, for Governor Ricketts, your hand be on him. Lord God, we, we lift up right now, um, Lord, our Congress, and we pray that your Holy Spirit would draw them to yourself. God, we pray that partisanship would be put aside. And, and oh God, that they would long for there to be unity. And there would be, God, a desire to bring health and healing to our nation. This I ask in Jesus' name. For existing President, Lord Trump, that you draw him to yourself. God, for, the, for President-elect Biden, God, that you draw him to yourself. That you, God, anoint these men. For your glory and your honor. Holy Spirit. We pray you guide them and you direct them to do what is right for our nation. Right for the people they serve. In the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that our governmental leaders, um, we, we pray 2 Timothy 1.7 over them. For God, you've not given us a spirit of fear. And Lord, I pray this really for all believers and in our country as a whole. You've not given your people a spirit of fear, but a spirit of power and love and soundness of mind. And we pray that soundness of mind, Lord, would be spread from your people, God, to this world in the name of Jesus. Jesus said, then pray this way. Give us our daily bread, O Lord. It's our dependence upon him for everything. So here's what I want you to do right now, Christ followers. I, I want you to think of the different needs in your life. Now, separate the wants from the needs. And this is where you might want to have that piece of paper. What do you desperately need? You have not because you ask not. So if the need comes to your mind, I, I want you to write it down. And this is where you're going to be persistent. But this is where you're going to be desperate. God, i got to have this need met. <clears throat> write down any concerns that weigh on you. Father, I acknowledge that everything I need today will come from you. Lord, forgive me for the times that I replace needs with wants or I follow illusions that this world has. Ultimately, God, you are the one I need most. I must have your presence in my life. You made the heavens and the earth. You're more capable of handling any situation that I'm dealing with right now. So, Lord, help teach your people right now to articulate the needs they have. Lord, there are some that are physically struggling. They're being diagnosed with COVID-19. We come against that in the name of Jesus. Others, Lord, loneliness. Others, disillusionment with the church or with government or with family. What are their needs? If whatever their needs you have, bring them before God right now. Mm -hmm. 
Lord, for that single mom who feels so overwhelmed. We pray you overwhelm her with your presence and overwhelm what is attempting to bring her down in Jesus' name. Lord, for the fighting couple whose marriage is on the rocks, that you help bring margin into their soul, that even now the blinders would come off and they would quit only seeing what their flesh wants to see. That you give them the emotional strength to Allow your Holy Spirit to give them self-control. I look to you for my help, O God. Sustain me and give me your peace. Reminded of Joshua, O God, where he didn't think he could lead the children of Israel, and all he had to hear was you say, be strong and courageous. Lord, I pray your people could hear your voice today. Remind me, remind us of your hope and your power. Thank you in advance, God, for taking care of my needs, our needs. Lord, you go on and you say we're to practice forgiveness by recognizing what you've done for us. So, Lord, forgive us our debts, our sin, our trespasses as we forgive those who have sinned or trespassed against us. I thank you for 1 John 1. Nine, that says if we confess our sins, that you're faithful and just to forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. Lord, as I'm praying right now, I pray that you would expose to any one of us, online, in person, live or recorded, if there is anyone, God, that we're holding offense from and we are holding, God, grudge towards them, I pray you expose that to, in our mind's eye. And we'd recognize, Lord, if we so graciously receive your forgiveness, we can choose to forgive even the worst sinner and the worst trespass. God, thank you so much for offering me the gift of forgiveness. Show me any areas of my life that I need to bring before you in order to receive forgiveness and healing. And, Lord, that's true. There are some people, they, Lord, there, there are people right now in the body of Christ who are sick. They're spiritually sick, if not physically, they're emotionally sick. And I think there's so much emotional unhealth unhealth, because we've truly not let go of an offense. And the bitterness has taken up root. Here's where I I want to encourage you. I'm going to pull away from the mic. I want you to confess any Sin could be thoughts, could be attitudes that have corrupted even your theology, your ability to trust God. Lord, I confess at times I put more faith in myself than you, my pride, thinking somehow I have to fix something or that somehow I have to intervene. And Lord, while I'm grateful that you use me as your servant, it is you and you alone that can bring lasting change. that I can only do what I can do. Teach me to release, God, situations that I cannot change. And help me, God, be reminded that when I tend to take things in my own power, I'm, I'm choosing flesh over faith. 
And God, I know that you want me to be clean, purified, cleansed. Forgive me for my sin, God. Thank you for showing us your unfailing grace as you have so freely forgiven me. I want to also, God, freely forgive others. Please help me let go of any of my offenses. I release to you, God, those who have hurt me. And I trust you. I trust you, God, to handle those situations according to your perfect will. If you agree with that, say yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Getting close to closing here. We're going to engage in spiritual warfare. Jesus said in pray like this. He says, pray that you're not led into temptation but to deliver us from the evil one. There's a war going on, church, and it's not with flesh and blood. Ephesians 6, 12 says, for our struggles is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, against spiritual forces of, uh, uh, of evil in heavenly realms. Mm. God, I recognize that our struggles, my struggles today, aren't against the people or circumstances around me, but against the enemy. It's not them versus us, God. It's him wanting to destroy our world. Please help me, Lord, not, not make this a contest and make people my enemy. Help me re-recognize and be focused. God, there's a war going on. It's for the hearts and souls of humanity. Please help me, God, recognize when the enemy's lying to me. Help me recognize the, his lies. And God, teach us as a church how to take captive the thoughts that would distract us or corrupt our theology. Whew. And make my thoughts obedient to the truth of your word. Right now, if there's any lies that you've been wrestling with, some of you have grown up with lies like God can't love me or I'm not smart enough to be used by God or I'm not a leader. Certain lies. I want you just to confront any lies in the name of Jesus. Father, I pray you teach us how to identify the lies in our lives. That God, for the church, for brothers and sisters in Christ, that we would not allow lies to drive us. We would not put our identity in the things that this world wants us to. God, that we wouldn't, wouldn't chase rabbit trails and allow ourselves to become distracted from seeking first the kingdom of God. Teach us, Lord, how to pray right now and how to bring down those strongholds. Lord, while the enemy wants to destroy me, I know that you came to give me life to the fullest. I speak your name, Jesus, over my life. I speak your name, Jesus, over our church. I speak your name, Jesus, over this staff. God, I speak your name over my family. Thank you, God, that you are more than enough, that the name of Jesus, every knee must bow. Hmm. And I speak the name of Jesus, God, over right now the situations in our world, over the issues of our life. We declare that no weapon formed against me or your people will prosper. I don't have to live in fear, and I need not let the enemy, God, consume me with that. So we come against fear in the name of Jesus right now. For the anxiety in people's lives, we come against it in the name of Jesus. Because you, O oh God, are greater in us than he is in the world. Come on, church, that's exciting. Thank you for that, O oh God. Thank you for that, O oh God. For, Lord, as we're told in Scripture, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. You're the kingdom that rules and reigns. God will never end. Hallelujah. Thank you for that. Father God, nothing is too hard for you. Through your great power. All things are possible. All authority is yours. All might is yours. And I know that your victory will be complete. Now, I don't know what's going on in everyone's life, but can you just stand on that right now? Lord, that your victory will be complete. You are amazing. And I worship you. And I praise you for your power and your presence in my life. You are my God. And you are worthy of all praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, thank you for your people gathering this time to pray. We've got actually been with you almost 40 minutes in prayer together. We thank you for this sweet time. We give our lives to you. And the next 21 days, teach us, Lord, how to enter and how to remain in your presence long enough that we learn how to pray. We learn how to listen. We 
learn how to live. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. 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 Thank you, all of you who are online right now uh, for joining us. Generally, we will be around 30 minutes, not this long the first day. We went a little longer. wanted to walk you through the Lord's Prayer. You're going to find, if we take one of the models of prayer that are located on our Christ Place resource page, which is Christ Place forward slash pray, um, like today I took the Lord's Prayer, it is, there's a scripted prayer in there. So it helps you know how to pray scripture, which is so awesome, um, and will guide you. Now, if you're an experienced prayer warrior, you, you probably don't necessarily need that. But you still may want to tune in, and you can actually have one ear to what we're praying here and occasionally go on your own tangents as necessary. Now, this thing's going to end in just a moment. Um, I want to say thank you for who you are and what God is doing in your life. I'm going to actually have uh, Pastor Rich get up here, and he is just going to uh, dismiss you by, by, by just praying a blessing over your life. And it's got to be almost a 30-second prayer, Pastor Rich, because time is about running out. We love you, everybody. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us. Remember, man, our God is able. Pastor Rich. God keep you. God bless you. And make your path straight. May he open the doors that he can use you in. Yes. And may he protect you as you walk in this world. Amen. Amen. Woo! God bless you, everybody. Thanks, staff.